And so the, the disciples come and he wants to make sure that they see this, that they understand the significance of what's just taken place. And so as Jesus gathers them together, he begins with the rabbinic way in which the rabbi would say, what I'm about to tell you is extremely important. This is important. I tell you the truth. King James, verily, verily, I say unto thee. This poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. Hmm. They've just observed rich people putting in offerings. Now Jesus says this two mites, this two little coins was more than everybody else. So obviously he's not speaking in the analytical sense that her two little fraction of a penny was more than all the others had put in. But he's pointing out to something else. He's making a, an observation. They gave out of their wealth. They were wealthy and they put the money in. And when they left, guess what? They were still wealthy. They were still wealthy. She, out of her poverty, puts her two mites in. And it goes on. She put in everything. She's all in. She put everything in to the treasury. All that she had to live on. Hmm. Some have said that she gave everything that she had left. Possibly this could be in the afternoon. She'd lived most of the day. She's taken everything else that she has and she gives it in the offering. Wow. Two coins, she doesn't keep one. So does it trigger anything? Ananias and Sapphira? You know, it shows, it shows me that how we are attached to our money kind of reveals what's going on in our heart. And I think that's why when, when Jesus is always talking about money, he's talking about it because he knows how we put value on it and where that resource lies within our heart. So in, in the Acts of the Apostles, we, we see that Ananias and Sapphira go and sell their lands and they present it to the apostles following Barnabas' example and they put it at the apostles' feet to distribute. And they say that this is everything. This is all that they have. Now we know that's not true. They held back. So you got to be careful when it's money and Jesus, money and God the Father, money and the Holy Spirit. You got to be careful with how you're portraying your heart. And so as as they come, <laughs> and so Peter makes an inquiry: Is this the price that you got from the sale of the land? Yes. Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? It's not an issue of lying to the church. It's an issue of how you're lying to God. I can't tell you exactly why, but somehow God takes how we present our money in our relationship to him. He takes that very seriously. Why? Because I think in heaven there, there's a shortage right now. And he needs a little extra income to, to get heaven to meet budget this week. No, he doesn't need it. But he knows that it's one of the things that will reveal the condition of our heart more than anything else. It's like, wow. We can do all the religious gymnastics. We can do all the performance. We can do all the different lip services about our devotion and our love for God. But when you say you love God, as I had one pastor says, you, you really love the Lord? Let me see your checkbook. You know, checkbooks kind of reveal 
where your heart is. It's like, wow. Now, obviously, we have some cultural differences because when we receive an offering here, and if you want to give something here, there's no big bucket to give in, and there's no way for you to make a big portrayal of how much you're giving. Matter of fact, you get on your, your cell phone, and you, and you click a button. Nobody knows what you gave. Or you drop a check in, or you get it in an envelope, you put it in the thing. There's all sorts of things. And I think that's part of the, of the, the way in which we don't let the right hand see what the left hand's doing. There's, there's something about hiddenness and secrecy in our expression of our love from our heart to the Lord that's really between him and, and you. It's the only ones. You and the Lord. Now, in our culture, if you want a tax write-off at the end of the year, we've got to have an, an accounting, and we send out a letter, and we say, thank you for giving, and we say, this year, this is how much you gave, and boom. And we have a very responsible man that does that for this community, and he's homesick today, and that's Bob Combs. Someone who's trustworthy. Someone that we trust with the sensitivity of the amounts that each one gives. And there's a real sacredness to that. So she gave everything that she had. 